Okay, my name is Evan Scheibel from CG Toots Plus, and in this tutorial, we're going to take a quick look at V-Ray RT. Um, now, most of you watching this video should probably be from pretty familiar with at least what V-Ray RT is, but if you're not, uh, let me give you a quick rundown just on pretty much the concept of what it is. Um, it's pretty much a real-time renderer. Um, in the menu, you'll see it uh, as called interactive renderer, V-Ray interactive renderer. And essentially what it does is it allows you to use the active shade uh, renderer in your viewport and connect to your V-Ray renderer in order to get uh, real-time updates in your viewport for exactly what you'll see in V-Ray. Pretty handy uh, if you're an uh, architectural visualization artist or, or any, uh, any kind of branch of, of design using V-Ray. Um, really good for relighting and texture work. And uh, what we're going to do is take a, a real quick look at uh, kind of a workflow, uh, introduction to the workflow of V-Ray RT. Um, now I want to say right off the bat that this video isn't for, uh, or it, it's not going to include advanced techniques and things like that. Um, it's just going to be an introduction and a workflow, um, or an introduction to the workflow for beginners and people who really have no prior knowledge at all to working with the active shade uh, rendering system within Max. So with that said, uh, let's kind of move forward here and just uh, just breeze through what we've got going on here. Um, now I've just got four viewports set up here. Uh, this is set up right here as my active shade window. Uh, this is just a top view, perspective view, and then my V-Ray physical camera view. Okay, now, in order to use V-Ray RT, you need to have a few preliminary things set up first. Uh, one of those is, as you'll see here, you need to have your renderer set up as V-Ray Advanced 1.5 SP4. Um, now, V-Ray RT, uh, as far as I know, doesn't work with prior versions of V-Ray. You need to have the 2010 version of V-Ray or uh, uh, the 1.5 SP4. Um, I'm privileged enough to have access to this for a bit, so we will uh, blow through here and uh, and we will get some videos out uh, that are, uh, I don't know if there is any videos out, but uh, there will be hopefully a few of them uh, before I don't have this any longer. Okay, so um, like I said, you have to have your V-Ray uh, uh, your V-Ray renderer set up and to do that you know everybody knows how to set the render you should go to assign renderer and you pick uh, V-Ray or er, uh, oops hit the wrong one you go here and you just pick uh, V-Ray oh, I already have it chosen so it's not going to show up but you just pick V-Ray advanced and then another thing that's really important uh, is you need to set your active shade renderer as well and you just click on this button here you only have two options one is the default scanline renderer and the other will be, if you have V-Ray RT installed, it will be the V-Ray Interactive Renderer. Um, now, if you're not familiar with working with the Active Shade system, um, it's really, really uh, handy. Um, I'm surprised Mental Ray hasn't uh, or doesn't have uh, something similar to this at all, uh, at least in uh, natively within Max or Maya. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, but uh, you can work with the default scanline renderer exactly the same way as I'm going to be working here. Um, so if you don't have V-Ray RT, you can apply all these same principles to the default renderer within Max and, uh, and do the same types of things. Now, here in this viewport, I have this set up as my active shade renderer, uh, or as my active shade view. Um, and it is essentially the camera view. Uh, so if I right click in this viewport I get a context menu uh, that comes up with V-Ray RT and right now I'm just going to hit close and that way it just brings it back to the V-Ray physical camera view. Now in Max 2010 the way to set this up for uh, to be an active shade viewport is just to click right here on the V-Ray physical camera uh, I have that's what I have it set up here uh, so you're going to click on the name here and you're going to hit active shade right here at the bottom and it's pretty much the same thing uh, as you'll see when working with the default scanline renderer and it's going to go through a few processes here and hopefully my graphics card doesn't get too overloaded and we can see a render here pretty soon uh, in this viewport and it's got to do some work to get started and uh, there we go And you can see it's really fast. Um, it does a really nice job and it really uses resources wisely. Uh, 
So anyway, real quick there, and as we uh, come to like, let's say at my top view here, as I move the camera around, uh, let me choose my camera here. Um, as I move my camera around, you can see uh, that really as I move anything around, I move that light there on accident. But as I move my camera, you're going to see the view change down here. Or at least it should. Let me close that out and go back into the active shade. And um, it, sh it, it updates pretty, pretty nicely and pretty interactively there when you move your views around. So uh, we can come into this viewport and just grab our camera move tools once we see our render here. We can kind of just move around and zoom in and things like that and we get some really interesting results pretty quickly we can see here. I want to uh, do one other thing in this video as well um, and that's take a brief look at working with the shaders and also the lighting material uh, as we come as we work with V-Ray RT here. Okay, so I'm going to bring up my material editor. Now, is really this is really important. Let me scale this down just a bit. You have to use V-Ray materials, whether it be the base V-Ray material or other materials like light materials and things like that, um, in order for them to show up within the viewport uh, and look right. You can use any material and you'll get diffuse colors uh, and maybe some specularity depending on what material you're using. But if you want the best results, um, you, you want to use the V-Ray shaders and materials. Um, so that's what I've done. I've just set up basic materials here uh, with different diffuse and, and, and uh, roughness uh, settings. But here's the interesting thing I've done. I've taken two um, just uh, cone-shaped uh, objects here, which are just, if you can see here in the Modify panel, there's just editable polys. And I've taken a material here which is called the v, the v Ray light material. And you can see, you click here, you can bring that up, but it's just the V Ray light material. And what I've done is I've essentially set up a little studio lighting setup here uh, that can be used within the active shade. And then we can see, we'll let that render here. And there we go. And uh, as that renders, uh, we'll take a look here. And we can we can really get some interesting results pretty pretty fast. This is a good way I think to work with the light material is rather than using uh, the pain lights are good. Uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, I call them pain lights. I'm not sure what they're actually called. Um, but this is a good way to get really customizable lighting setups. Uh, and you can do all sorts of stuff with these these setups here by using the light material on an object. And you can see what I've done is I've got two umbrellas pretty much umbrella lights here um, that are reflecting off of our teapots in the scene here. Now you can see as I even update these, I'll highlight this and I'll come to like vertex mode and what I'll do is just open up the umbrella just a bit. Let me come here and just open up this hole just a bit and you can see it's going to automatically update for us whenever a parameter uh, in anything is changed and that's going to affect the scene. Uh, you can see that this updates here with a real-time preview of what we what we have. And you can set any of the viewports to be your active shade viewport, but uh, you want to make sure that they are, uh, before you choose active shade, uh, you want to make sure that the viewport you want to see uh, rendered in real-time is selected. So in this case, uh, I selected my V-Ray physical camera, and then I um, uh, set that viewport to active shade and then you can like I said you can uh, kind of dolly around and, and you can get a real-time update uh, here so I'm um, not sure why it's not updating but uh, I think it's just overloading my my GPU a little bit and we're not getting the performance we would hope for uh, but uh, it's not a big deal and then you can see I can come through here and every time I make a change here. Uh, it's going to be reflected in my viewport. And, and so this is just a really, uh, really, really handy uh, tool. And uh, I hope 
you know you get some hints from this video and uh, it really spikes your interest in not only using uh, the V-Ray RT but also here let me demonstrate really quickly also using the default scanline renderer so what I'm going to do is just in my top view very very quickly here I'm going to create a new standard camera uh, we'll create a target camera here and I'll drag this out and then I'll set this viewport to this new camera you can't see it up there but I just set this viewport here to camera one and now we will orbit this around a bit and get an interesting view and uh, maybe bring that in a bit and then we'll set our renderer and our active shade renderer both to the default scan line and we'll hit OK and then we'll set the active shade to the default scan line renderer and now when we come in here um, and when we change this view to active shade well, first let's change it to our camera one and then when we change this to active shade you'll see it's just going to be the same thing we're not going to get anything however at this point because uh, we don't have any lights in the scene uh, we only have the v-ray light so again I'll really fast create a just a new standard light uh, create an omni we'll bring that out and drag it up in our scene just to light that up just a bit and you so we can see maybe still not enough light there but essentially we're doing the same thing oh and another thing we have to do is change our materials so what I'll do is just for this uh, I'm gonna drag a basic default material out onto everything here and then change this to our active shade view and it should work now there we go and you can see now I mean it's not very good but if we come in and uh, bring up our material material editor um, we can change the properties here like uh, we can bring up our specular level quite a bit and you can see you get real-time updates um, with that you can come in and change like uh, anything that you change what will, will be updated and will be reflected in your in your um, turn shadows on um, and everything anything you, you do will be reflected so that's a really handy tip and uh, for those of you who weren't really familiar with active shade rendering uh, in the viewport uh, you can uh, hopefully put that to good use if you're working with V-Ray or the default scan line um, okay, my name's Evan Scheibel again, and uh, for CG Toots Plus, look forward to some more uh, quick tips coming up, hopefully, uh, with V-Ray RT and some more advanced uh, techniques. Uh, thanks again for watching, and stay tuned for more.